Hey, it is a Tiki Technical Tuesday, and behind me, we have a nearly empty slip tank. So it's time for you and me to make some slip. Now, we talk about slip all the time in Tiki Technical Tuesday, but we've never actually talked about what it is. Now, buckle up, because that's going to involve some chemistry, some science, um, which are both classes that I failed in high school. Uh, so I'm doing my best. I'm doing my best here, but keep in mind I'm self-taught and um, yeah, we're just gonna go for a little ride down the chemistry road. So first up, here we have pottery clay. This is the stuff that you used in art school or in elementary school, or maybe you've never used it at all. But anyway, this stuff is 21% water as a rule, and the rest is clay particles and some other magical dust, I don't know. And then this is slip. This is the stuff that's in the slip tank. Now you may think, as I once did, that there's just way more water in this. And you just take this normal stuff and then you just put a bunch of water in it and then it becomes mud and you can cast with it. Not true. This is 21% water. This is only 30% water. So there's only 10% more water added. How does it get so liquidy? That's the science! And in order to understand that, we're gonna consult the slip Bible. So for years and years, while we lived in Hawaii, I used pre-made slip, meaning I bought buckets of slip that was all pre-mixed. But when we moved to Oregon, I decided it was time for me to make my own slip uh, because you can make it a lot cheaper and you can make a lot more of it. So I started searching the internet and I put together this little slip Bible. It is made entirely of website information that I found and printed out and then read and highlighted like a maniac. Um, yeah, and so this is how I learned how to make my own slip. Here's where it all starts. Uh, we have three 50 pound bags of dry slip mix from Laguna Clay. This is their white cone five uh, casting body. In addition to the 50 pound bags of clay, we will be using soda ash, which dissolves lignite, which is a fancy word for coal, because in addition to mining clay, sometimes coal gets stuck in there too, which we will address tomorrow when we go through our quality control. Um, so yeah, we got soda ash, and we also have a little something called barium carbonate. Now this, according to the slip bible, uh, dissolves, oh, no, sorry, it neutralizes sulfates. I don't know. I put it in there and it works. And then lastly, we have the, uh, what I like to call the plutonium of slip making, and that would be Darvan 811, which is my deflocculant, which we'll also talk about in a little bit. In order to mix up this 150 pounds of clay, we're going to need to add 7.5 gallons of water to the tank. First up, we have 0.75 ounces of barium carbonate. Then we have 1.5 ounces of soda ash. Okay, let's talk about the plutonium of slip making, uh, the Darvan 811. Some other people use sodium silicate. They're both different chemicals that do the same thing. Now, I am not a scientist, but I'm gonna use some fancy words with right now. The first one is deflocculant. So this is a deflocculant, um, also known, it's an electrolyte. These are both fancy words, which I don't really understand, but I can tell you this. These things, when you add them to a solution, they will negatively charge the clay particles and make them want to stay away from each other. And they will also hold them in suspension so that they won't all just drop to the bottom of the tank. Now, if we wanted to just make mud water, like if we wanted to just add a bunch of water to normal clay so that it flows like water, the problem is all those clay particles overnight would just drop to the bottom of the tank. But if you use magic, AKA science, and you negatively charge those particles, they're all held in suspension by, I guess, that negative charge? Who knows? All I know is that when this stuff starts to get super thick while we're mixing it, um, you just add 
a few drops of this stuff and it, boom, turns to water. It is weird. Now, I call it plutonium because if you add too much, all of a sudden that negative charge turns into a positive charge or something happens terrible. But all I know is all of a sudden, all of the clay will settle out and drop to the bottom. That's called overflocculation and you want to avoid that at all costs. Anyways, I'm gonna mix out uh, 2.5 ounces of this and add it to 2.5 ounces of water uh, because you never wanna add it super straight right away or else problems, anyway. With the mixer going in the slip tank, we dissolve the barium carbonate and soda ash into some hot water and add it in. So all three lead bags are in, and the hazardous portion of the day is done, so I took the face mask off. Um, I added some of this, and I tried to get some video. I just don't know if it's coming across how viscous the slip is, and then when I add a little bit of the, the Darvan, the deflocculants, um, how it changes. So I'm going to try. It's still pretty, pretty thick in there, and I have about <clears throat> probably a half ounce left of this stuff, so I'm going to add it. Hopefully it comes across, because I can definitely see uh, lying under the camera. Did you see it? Did you see it change? Well, it totally did, I swear. Now it's much more uh, fluid and, and it's not like thick mud. It's, it's much more, um, well, watery. Uh, so I'm gonna let this mix for, oh, I don't know, another 10 minutes or so. I'm not going to add any more of this until I check back tomorrow when we evaluate the slip. Uh, the danger is always adding too much of this and then the slip turns into a few hundred pounds of mud which we can't use. So anyway, we're going to check back tomorrow and uh, quality control our brand new 15 gallons of slip. Hey, it is day two of slip making. It looks like this has had a full 24 hours to fully hydrate. Let's take a look and see how it's doing. Okay, so here we are. Beautiful sunlight beams on our fresh slip. It has gelled a little bit. You can see it's, it's not totally fluid and that's normal. Slip will gel. Uh, if you let it sit for a long, long time. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to mix this for 10 minutes, and then I'm going to start doing some quality check on it. Okay, while the slip is mixing and warming up over there, we can perform the first test, and we're going to do a specific gravity test. Specific gravity is another fancy science word for
for um, the comparison of how much your material weighs in comparison to the weight of water. So slip, we're looking for uh, a specific gravity of 1.7 to 1.8, meaning it is 1.7 times to 1.8 times heavier than water, which can be weird when you pick up a bucket of slip. It is heavy, it's heavier than you think because it's like, you know, liquid dirt. Anyway, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna draw exactly 50 cc's of slip out of the tank, gonna weigh it, and then I'm gonna divide whatever the gram weight is by 50, and we will get a very rough specific gravity and see where we're at. All right, I got my 50 cc's uh, drawn up, and here we go. Okay, slight edit there because I forgot to tear the scale to, you wanna make sure that you have the weight of the syringe accounted for. Anyway, so got it all working out. Uh, we're at 88 grams. Divided by 50, 1.76, which I am calling perfect. So why do we measure specific gravity? Well, we want to make sure that, I mean, like, making slip is like baking a cake. Maybe, I don't know, I don't bake. But you want to make sure you have the proper ratio of water to clay. If you have too much water in here, maybe it flows a little better but there's too much water for the molds to, to draw out. So you're, you're, when you pour and you cast, the, the stuff will sit in the molds forever. It won't form a good skin. If you have too little water, that means that you'll be having to add too much deflocculant and you run the risk of your slip getting overflocculated and collapsing, which is what we talked about. Anyway, I'm just kind of figuring this out as I go along and uh, this is a good mix. I'm pretty happy with the way this turned out. And hey, it's warmed up, so we're ready for phase two. So this slip may look beautiful and ready to use, but there could be something hidden lurking inside. And that hidden thing is lignite, AKA coal, which means that while they were mining the clay that we put into this stuff, they may have also mined a bunch of coal. So we're gonna run this stuff through a sieve and make sure that we don't have any um, hidden surprises, if you know what I'm saying. Alrighty, I have got a 30 mesh sieve here. It's like, it's a very fine kind of, a, you know, screen door material. And we're gonna run, slip through this thing and see if we can catch anything. I'm gonna run this for five minutes with the hopes of catching as much, you know, uh, lignite it if I can. I'm gonna take a look at what I have, clean it out, and then I'm gonna run it for another five minutes and see if we're reducing the amount. It's a, it's a process. Let's just, let's just go through it. Five minutes. Okay, so that was five minutes. Um, let's let this drain and then we're gonna take it to the sink and see what we got. This is kind of like panning for gold, only the gold is black and you actually don't want to find any gold. Okay, so you can see that we're getting some stuff here. Now, there's a lot of weird stuff in clay. There's gonna be like some just junk that falls in from the studio while I'm working. Um, other organic matter, sometimes there's like little bits of wood. I don't know, there's a lot of weird stuff that gets stuck and slip. The real lignite, the stuff that we're trying to avoid, is jet black and it sinks like a stone because, hey, it is a stone. Okay, so for five minutes of cycling through my slip tank, this is like 
nothing. This is a great amount. I've had um, batches of slip before where I have like a little mound of um, lignite, which is terrible. Um, it burns out fine in the kiln, but it then leaves voids in the clay, which can cause pinholing in the glazing. Anyway, uh, just to be super safe, I'm going to run another five minutes and see how it compares to this pile. And uh, we'll, uh, that should call it for the day. And then we should have some uh, perfect slip. All right, here is another five minutes. Way less material. I uh, think that that is a fantastic amount of lignite. I can live with this. Um, yeah, so let's take a look at the final results. So there you have it, folks. 15 gallons of slip ready to make into tiki mugs. Uh, now you know where the clay comes from. Well, at least you know that it comes from a bag. I didn't know where it comes from before that. Um, anyway, I'll see you guys next week.